Cool. Yes, absolutely. Is that okay? There? Where's Bree? What's she doing? She's shooting her, her film. Which she's one? She's actually directing it. What? Ooh. Yeah, she's directing a movie now. Wow. Yeah. Guys, congratulations on the film. Thank, Thank you. you. Could, could we start? Could you kind of set it up for us? Could you, you know, tell us what we're going to see on screen? Uh, well, <laughs> um, I, I play a guy called Vernon who is a, an arms dealer, South African arms dealer from the 70s, and I'm selling some guns to a bunch of Irishmen. And it starts out with just a normal transaction in a warehouse, and then things go from sort of bad to extremely bad. It's sort of a study of what can happen, and Charlotte was saying this earlier, of what can happen to the unchecked male ego, where you right. have these two sides who each have a clear objective and what they want from each other. I want your money. I want your guns. We seem like we have something good here. And then this side gets offended by this side, and the stress level goes up to here. And then they retaliate, and then this side's stress level goes up to here. And then it just keeps going up, and all it would take is one person to just go, wait, 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 guys, 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 we're all adults here, come on, you want this, we want that, let's go. But no one does that because they're all hard men, and no one's going to apologize, or no one's going to step back and release the tension. So it just builds and builds and builds and builds like a screw, just tightening and tightening until it erupts. And once it erupts, you think, oh, it's erupted, and then the eruption continues to go and go and go. It's just a lot of fun. And um, presumably you were attracted by the chance to wear those clothes and facial hair, that sort of thing. Was that part of it? That was that was a big one for me. I mean, I was really, <laughs> yeah. I was really attracted to to work with Ben, um, probably more so than any other film I've done. Sure. I really, I, I just wanted to after I met after I had a Skype session with him. I was just like, wow, man, this would be fun to do this movie with this guy. But the clothes and the look, I'd never done anything like that before, and you know, to to get to have that much fun. I mean, there's something really special about it. Once I read it, I was like, this film wouldn't be the same at all if it didn't have the, if it wasn't set in the 70s. Yeah. Um, it, did you know Ben's work? I did. I'd seen, I'd seen Sightseers, Sightseers. which yeah. I thought was hilarious and dark and sardonic and all those great things. Yeah. And then uh, after reading this and having a, a great Skype with Ben, I went back and watched his other work and uh, I watched Kill List and I thought, there's no way this is the same director. Like, this yeah. is a totally different movie and then I saw a field in England and thought the same thing again like how is this one guy making all these vastly different movies and then and then you have Free Fire which in a way fits into this massive collage of what Ben is able to do as a director which is so impressive did, did he talk to you both about the kind of you know the influences about where it came from I'm mean, a bit, bit peck and par maybe and yeah oh yeah I mean yeah yeah he talked about the peck and par stuff he talked about the old pulp films of the 70s that he would watch yeah know? Just all those inspirational things that you can so clearly see have bled through him and into the screen. Now, it's the wonderful world of movies where you make this, your Boston 1970s, but you're actually making this in an old warehouse in Brighton on the south coast of England. Yeah. How bizarre is that? I mean, that's wonderful. It's actually really smart on Ben. If I was directing a movie that was taking place in a warehouse, I'd want to do it five minutes from my house too. Yes, <laughs> you know? yes. And it was it was it was a little painful because it was summer and the weather was actually really good That's a lot of the days. Yeah. Right. And um, so it was it was quite frustrating at times to have to go into the warehouse where you couldn't just yeah. cruise in, around Brighton into that world. Yeah. Because yeah, they, yeah. they had us all in every single day. It wasn't yeah, like oh you're not working today. Yeah. It was like oh you're all in a warehouse and if we happen to shift the camera this way, mm -hmm. we're going to need to see you over there and we need to see you over there. So we need everybody first thing in the morning and everybody would just hang out and then. Killian's agent sent him a dartboard, and then Jack Rayner and I went and bought a ping pong table, and then we set up sort of like a romper room where everybody was just hanging out before filming. Fantastic. Yeah. Was this one, I mean, it looks so much fun. The energy on screen is fantastic. Yeah. What, was it fun to make? I mean, I think so. <sighs> yeah, I, don't I, think think so. I don't think I've yeah. ever had this much fun, specifically with a cast, you know, yeah. I mean, where everybody, because normally, you do a movie that might have a big cast, but you spend most of your scenes doing them with one or two, maybe three or four people. Yeah. In this, it was it was a group effort the entire time. So there was so much camaraderie and there was so much fun. And, and yeah, it was hard. I mean, there was, we probably each, I mean, respectively crawled a marathon's distance worth over rubble in this dirty ass warehouse full of detritus. But we were all doing it together, so it was a uh, it was a lot of we fun. We still have we still have an email chain that all the actors are on, yeah, which yeah, I've right. never had coming out of a movie before. You know, you, yeah, you do yeah. get close doing films, 
But this one does seem to have, and it's still going, you know, like, what is it, a year and a half later. Everybody's still, like, we're you know, so every now and then we still send yeah, yeah. out on the group email, which is, which is very rare. Do you, when you first read the script, it, it, it's very funny, isn't it? I mm. mean, the, the, some of the lines are just glorious. Can you, have you got favourite lines? Were there lines that were jumping out at you thinking, I can't wait to say that? Because you both, both your characters have got great lines. Well, I think a lot of, I mean, for me, a, there was a lot of improvisation. I improv yeah, an enormous that? amount on this film, you know, more than, probably more than, you know, anything other than District 9, to be honest, because Ben had, a, originally this was written as an English character, so it was very different. The version of the script that I read, my guy ended up being very different. So there was a lot of collaboration between me and Ben and Amy as we went, right. where the lines would come from. And I think even a lot of your stuff, too. You know, ninety um, percent of his stuff, though, like especially all the wow. great lines, are Shelto. You know, yeah. just because they would stick us all on this warehouse, and we'd all be on set, and he'd go, "Great, let's get a couple just like we need them," and then you know, do a couple where you guys do what you want to do. And I mean, because I'm playing a character that's the mouth, you know, yeah. so I do get to just yeah. you know, go go crazy. <laughs> Not just the mouth, the mouthiest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, of Real course, pleasure. Man. Thank you. Good to see you again, man. Nice to see you.